Hello and welcome back. So today I want to talk about bipolar junction transistors and in particular look at ways of increasing their gain. Now of course I'm talking about the well-known Darlington configuration and the less well-known Cycloe configuration. So if you're curious about how these things work and how to get the best performance out of these configurations, then keep watching. So, to start off, why do you need more gain? I mean, most small signal transistors have gains of above 100 in most cases. I mean, if we look at the datasheet of the BC817, we can see that only if you drive the transistor at minus 55 degrees, so you have to be really cold for that, only then do you get a gain of below 100, but in most cases, at normal temperatures, you will have a gain of more than 100 at collector currents of up to 400 milliamps, so that should be plenty. But the story is not the same if we look at a higher current transistor. Now if we look at the not so modern 2N3055, we can see that its gain, especially when getting up to really high currents, I mean this is a transistor that can handle 15 amps of collector current, but the graph only goes up to 10, but at this point, Regardless of ambient temperature, the gain is roughly around 10. And this is with a collector emitter voltage of 4 volts. So as you go to higher currents with transistors, gain steeply drops. And even for more modern bipolar transistors, you still get this sort of effect going on. So if you want to use this sort of transistor, you're gonna have a hard time trying to drive it. I mean, most op amps or microcontrollers can output a current of 10, 15, 20 milliamps, so if you're not using anything special, current is usually limited to this sort of range. And if your gain is only like 10, then that means you can only switch around 100 milliamps. You can't even get near the 10 amps that this sort of transistor can actually handle. So what you would need is some sort of way to increase the gain but without making a hugely complicated circuit. I mean, you want to keep it simple, right? Now, back in the 50s, this sort of gain issue was far, far worse. So, this guy named Sidney Darlington came up with an idea. Now, the nice thing is that his patent is available online, so it's not hidden away somewhere. You can actually find it, I will leave a link to this. And what he proposed was to use a dual transistor configuration to amplify the gain. And one of the special things about what he proposed was that the two transistors, so here we can see the classic Darlington configuration, his proposal was to get both the transistors on the same silicon chip. Now up until this point, all circuits with transistors were made with individual discrete transistors. So in some sense, Darlington is credited with proposing the first integrated circuit, so a way in which multiple transistors are on the same chip. Now, he proposed all sorts of variants, but this one actually stuck. So this is the kind of configuration that you can actually see to this day being implemented. And the main advantage of this is that the total gain of this two transistor configuration is larger than the two gains multiplied in between. And basically what you can get is a transistor that has a capability to drive very large currents, but with a very, very large gain. So you take the advantages of the small signal transistor and you can couple it with the advantages of the high power transistor. So let's see this thing in action in a simulation first. I got this basic circuit right here. I'm using a 0 to 5 volt pulse with which I'm driving a Darlington configuration built with two transistors and this is connected to a 2.5 ohm resistor so that we get roughly 2 amps from this thing. Now if we run this we get our input signal, and if we look into the collector of our Darlington transistor, well, we see that it's turning on pretty okay, but it's not really turning off. So with this 50 kHz signal, things are still not working that well. But we'll fix that in a moment. For now, let's just see the gain properties of this arrangement. So if we look into the base of the first transistor, we see that we're using a current of around 300 microamps. 
Now the first transistor is amplifying this current and in the emitter, although we have some spikes going up to 60 milliamps, most of the current is roughly at around 16.8. So part of this current is the base current and the other part is the amplified current. So we went from roughly 300 microamps to 16 milliamps. So that's a gain factor of around 50. Now we take this current, which goes into the base of the next transistor, and the current going through the second transistor through its collector is in the order of almost 2 amps. So now we take the 16 milliamps and amplify to almost 2 amps. And really that's how the gain of one transistor is multiplied by the gain of the other transistor to get a total gain which is much much larger. So we end up with a configuration that uses a 300 microamp input signal to drive a 1.95 amp output signal. So now to get it to switch faster we can first look at the problem. So we see that the input signal on the first transistor looks really nice it goes from 0 to 1.8 but if we look at the signal in the second transistor we see that it goes from 1 volt to 0 0.7. So we're not really turning off the second transistor and the common way to do this is to add an extra resistor between the base and the emitter of the second transistor. And by doing this, with the same input signal, we have a much much cleaner turn on turn off characteristic. So if we compare this to our reference signal, we see that this time the transistor is actually switching on and off at 50 kHz. Now if we look in any good datasheet for a Darlington transistor, we will see these resistors built in. So there's one that has a quite small value between the base and the emitter of the second transistor, but there's usually one for the first transistor also. So if we also add a second resistor for our first transistor, in this case at least, things are working a bit worse, because we have a very large input base resistance, but normally this should also help with turning the transistor off and keeping it off when there's no signal in the system. Now, the basic Darlington configuration has a few drawbacks. First of all, you need quite a large input signal voltage. So for our transistor that we've built, we need more than 1.8. So at a certain point we exceed the 2 volt mark. So this is a very large input signal voltage. Second problem with this arrangement is that, especially for very very high current transistors, usually you will only have an NPN version. Now in the past, the standard high power NPN transistor was the 2N3055. It didn't really have any PNP equivalent for quite some time. Nowadays there is one. But the point is that even today with the very very high power transistors, usually there's only an NPN version. That's because it's much more difficult to manufacture the PNP version, both from a cost point of view and from a manufacturability point of view. Now to address these two problems, there is a solution. And this was proposed by a man called George Clifford Sikloi. So he's Hungarian, sort of. He was born in Hungary, but then he moved to America. And basically what we can see here, this is the patent that he filed. Now, we can see that this is a configuration built with two different transistors. So he's not going into the two transistors on the same chip idea. He's using two different transistors. But what he's doing here is using an NPN transistor to drive a PNP transistor. Or the other way around, a PNP transistor to drive an NPN transistor. You get the same high gain advantage, because the gain of one transistor is multiplied by the gain of the other transistor, but you only need to be able to drive the base emitter of the first transistor, and the polarity of the combined circuit is defined by the first transistor. So if the first transistor is a PNP, and the second one is an NPN, the whole thing will work as a PNP transistor. Or you can do it the other way around. So what I got here is our circuit in the Sikloi configuration, in which I'm using the same input pulse driving an NPN transistor, which drives a second high power PNP transistor. So this thing works like an NPN transistor, but again, using a very small input signal, so 400 microamps, we're driving a 2 ampere signal. Now if we look at the output of this, we can see that it's not turning on that well. So just like with the first transistor, if we don't add any resistors, it's quite a slow turn off component. But now if we add the extra resistor between the base and the emitter, we see that switching characteristics are much better. 
it's not as good as with our Darlington transistor, but the main difference here is the actual transistors used. The TIP3055 and the TIP2955 are not exactly the same, so they don't have the exact same properties, they're slightly different. Again, this is because you can't really create two different transistors to have the exact same parameters. So now, let's check out these two transistor assemblies on a practical circuit. So, to test things out today, since we're working with high currents, it's time for the big power supply. Basically, I've got a really simple setup. I got square wave coming in from the signal generator, plotted on the second channel of the oscilloscope, and this is going into my small board that has the two transistor configurations. One is the Darlington and the other is the Cycloid. So both are working as NPN transistors, but one is made with two NPN transistors, the other with an NPN and a PNP. These things are connected to a roughly 2.55 ohm resistor, and I'll be powering it from the big power supply. So we can fire this thing up. It's set to 7 volts at the moment. And let's first check out the Darlington transistor. We can see on the first channel the voltage in the collector of this thing, and we can see that at a 50 kHz signal, it's switching very nicely, so it looks even better than in the simulation. So the current going through this thing is a bit more than 2 amps when it's conducting, and well, 0 when it's not conducting. And we can tell this because the total current consumed by both transistors is roughly 2.5, but they're only conducting half the time, so each of them is using 1.25 amps, but when they're conducting it's double because it's 50%, so it's 2.5 amps. Trust me on this. So we can see that the Darlington is working pretty well, and if we look at the Cycloe, well it looks exactly the same. So I added the second oscilloscope probe so we can actually see the two transistors, and well, it seems that the cycloid configuration is turning on just a bit slower. But they're both working roughly the same way. So in general, if you need a bipolar transistor that has a lot of gain, you can go for either of these two configurations. Now, normally the Darlington you will also be able to find as a commercial product in a single package, placed on the same silicon chip as its inventor intended in the first place, but the Cycloid configuration, at least from my research, I couldn't really find both transistors in the same package. So for that transistor configuration, usually you will have to build it from discrete transistors. But all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos, and see you next time. Bye bye!